Well, welcome back guys to the Spurgeon Piper. This is Wilson with you. Uh, so today we are having another uh, interview on the, the topic of health. And, and so here I have today is Joseph Spurgeon. Uh, so Joseph, thanks again, man, for, for jumping on. I appreciate it. And to begin, give us some information about yourself. Sure. Um, so first name's Jonathan. Um, just so John, let, let me interrupt real quick. I know a Joseph Spurgeon. So that's why I called you Joseph. So I apologize. Uh, Where do you know a Joseph Spurgeon from? He lives in Ohio. Okay. And he's a pastor. Okay. So I know, I know Joseph Spurgeon in Indiana. That is okay. No, it's Indiana. Uh, I believe he lives in it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. He lives in I Indiana. Actually know him too. Uh, yep. Okay. Are, are y'all related? No, I don't believe so. No relation okay. there. Uh, but yeah, he actually reached out to me thinking we were related. Um, <laughs> And so that's okay. how I know him randomly. So gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. So, and, and one other thing about him, I, I know he's a, the great grandson of, of Charles Spurgeon. So there, I don't know if you have a relationship to Charles Spurgeon that you're aware guess, of. But. Yeah, I am. We're like distant cousins. Uh, there you are. Charles. So I guess maybe I am related to Joseph at the time we couldn't find a connection, but gotcha. Um, gotcha. Well, there you go. So, all right. Okay. So, so with that covered, Jonathan, uh, yeah, give us some information about yourself. Sure, sure. Um, so I'm a general dentist in the Middle Tennessee area outside of Nashville. Um, I own a private practice here and uh, I've been practicing. So I've been in the dental field for coming up on about seven years now. Um, right. So I uh, went to school in Louisville, Kentucky, um, which is where near where I met Joseph and um, moved to Alaska to do a residency. Um, after that, I stayed in Alaska doing travel dentistry for a while and um, eventually moved back home to Tennessee, where I'm from, to uh, start my own practice. All right. Awesome. Well, where'd you go to school in Louisville? Uh, University of Louisville. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Good deal. Good deal. All right. So that, that, that's your background with the profession. What's, how'd you get into pipe smoking? Sure. So, you know, I grew up um, reading a lot, Lord of the Rings, Sherlock Holmes, stuff like that. Right. Um, you know, you know, reading books like, like C.S. Lewis and things like that. Um, so I had some inspiration there and I was always interested in it, you know, especially once I saw Lord of the Rings when I was a kid, like I was always kind of interested in it. And um, so once I, uh, I was in Alaska, I was doing a lot of backpacking, a lot of solo hiking and stuff. And um, so I'd go up into the mountains and I would sit and I'd watch mountain goats and uh, watch the clouds roll in um, below my feet and stuff. And just like very, gave very uh, Lord of the Rings vibes. And uh, one day I thought, you know, I'm going to, I'm just going to try pipe smoking. Never tried it before ever. Um, it just decided to give it a shot. So um, I can't even remember where I bought my stuff from. I spent like 20 bucks on like uh, a pub and some, um, what was it? Captain Black, uh, like the original something, sure, uh, sure. something really not, not the best, but uh, so I just tried that. I go up in the mountains and it was pretty much the only time I would, would ever take it with me, you know, for, you know, light a pipe is when I was up in the mountains. Um, it was very experiential for me being up there. Yeah. Um, so that's how I got started. Absolutely. Did you have any family that were interested in it or, or were smokers at one time? Um, you know, my grandparents were smokers, you know, way, way in the back, but just cigarette smokers. Sure. Um, sure. You know, and then they quit, you know, by the time I was born. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Uh, so mostly Lord of the Rings, C.S. Lewis, that, that avenue, which, which was yeah. a lot for me as, as well. Okay. I think for a lot of guys, um, I haven't looked into this, but I'm going to imagine there was a huge uh, peak um, or um, yeah. uh, a rebirth of pipe smoking around the time of the movies coming out. Sure. So that, that definitely was, was the case uh, for myself. Now, uh, one question I didn't ask you or, or give you uh, before we began, but with your pipe smoking, has there been a, um, a reaction with either family or colleagues in, in you choosing to do so? Uh, negative, positive, either? Sure. You know, um, not really either way. Like, I mean, I'm not, um, you know, I'm not posting pictures on my, my dental business, uh, Facebook page with me, you know, with a pipe or something, <laughs> not that I'm hiding it, but, sure, sure. Um, you know, I, I think, um, moderation is definitely a personal definition, but, you know, I, I've had some colleagues that are very anti-smoking, but then they're, you know, Friday afternoon, they're five shots deep. <laughs> <seven> <laughs> right. 
right. that's not really good for the liver either. Yeah, you know? so, yeah. I mean, I think it, you know, I've had a few colleagues that were, you know, they're, they're, uh, have a very negative view of it. Um, and that's, that's fine. That's their view. Sure. Um, but I think it kind of, I, I don't let it bother me. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And, and that's been the same for me and, um, uh, as a pastor, uh, no doubt there's probably those who look down upon it because smoking, smoking, whether it's a cigarette or it's a cigar or pipe. Uh, but overall, I don't hide it um, and I don't broadcast it, you know, on my personal Facebook page yeah. like Same. you. It's 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 not I, I don't post a lot of pictures. I may like some things of like smokypipes.com sure. may make a post. Uh, if you go into our, my house, I might have like a 10 in my home office out. Um I have a Lord of the Rings pipe out. And so there's that balance of, I don't want to hide it, but right. I'm not broadcasting it either. Sure. You know, So sure. yeah, very similar in that regard. Um, so uh, of course we're, we're wanting to talk about, or the main focus is oral health um, and, and what we need to keep in mind when we do smoke a pipe in a cigar. So we, we, we may kind of lump them together though I sure. imagine there are a bit of distinction. Um, what do we need to be aware of as pipe smokers when it comes to oral health um, and concerns we should have? Yep. Um, top three things um, from a dental, you know, oral health perspective, uh, it's going to be oral cancer, okay? uh, dry mouth, which can cause some problems, and then also periodontal disease. Okay? Those are like kind of three things we want to look at. And um, you know, one thing I want to say, a lot of studies, and so like when I was taking pathology classes in dental school, um, and just research that I've done, most of the science and studies, peer-reviewed journals, they're lumping all smoking together. So it's really hard to separate out, you know, someone who's smoking, you know, a lot of the studies of someone who's smoking, you know, a pack or two of cigarettes a day. And so it's really hard to kind of separate those things out. So you, you kind of have to read between the lines a little bit. There are very right. few studies tailored just to pipe smoking or cigar smoking. So a lot of my, my observations um, it comes from both, you know, research and science, but also just personal observations um, of my own personal patients that I've seen. Sure, sure. And that, that's been the complication with all of this is uh, there hasn't been much distinction between cigarette smoking and in the pipe cigar world. Uh, sure. Though, though there, I, I think common sense most would say, well, yeah, there has to be some, some type of distinction um, and not to downplay concerns we have, but uh, sure. boy, cigarette and a pipe are there's a lot of difference going on there uh, sure. with, with uh, additives. Even, yeah the, the additives and even you know frequencies things like that right um, you know volume um you know just even obviously inhalation versus not i mean there's there's a lot of differences there sure so what is it and i don't know if you have the answer to this and if not that's that's fine what is it about smoking it's a really silly question in a way. What is it about smoking, uh, pipe smoking specifically, that's problematic with oral health? Sure. So, you know, there's there's a lot of free radicals and things when, when anything combusts. Um, there's a lot of free radicals uh, and that can cause tissue damage, which can lead to cancer. So basically damages the DNA of cells and that can cause um, lesions to start forming and, and uh, usually uh, squamous cells. So like the lining of the mouth, which is what the smoke comes into contact with. Um, and so one of the things, you know, really think about as far as reducing risk of oral cancer, um, a few things. One, you know, get a yearly checkup, right? Get a, a dentist uh, was almost always going to be, should always be doing an oral cancer screening. Even if they're not telling you that they're doing it, they're going to be scanning, looking um, for, for anything uh, that might stand out. There are also um, some tests that can be done to, to look for precancerous cells. Um, so things like, they're called like oral ID or Velscope, and those only have about a 50% efficacy. It, it's not um, a hard and fast, it's going to find it if it's there, but you know, if you're, you're smoking, you're concerned about it, it can really stack the deck in your favor. Only thing to be aware of is usually um, insurance won't cover it. So you may wanna hmm. ask about it, and usually it comes with, it, the price varies by region around here, probably about $40. Okay. Um, that's something you would get once yearly. And it's just as an aid to where if like a, a lesion isn't visible to the eye yet, that can help pick it up. Again, it's not, it's not a fail safe or, you know, anything hundred percent, but it can help. Gotcha. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. So 
some some will hear this information and go, well, man, that should I be greatly concerned with getting into this this hobby, or is this something like what? Where, where's the level of really concerned? Maybe sure. you should just not do it. To uh, where, where, yeah. where, where should we be in that in that uh, scope there? Sure. Yeah, and this is where it's a little bit hard because yeah. um, there's not a lot of studies with pipe smoking, right? So we know if you're smoking a certain amount, you know, cigarette smoking, um, eventually that there's a really great chance that's going to lead to lung cancer. In fact, my grandmother got lung cancer, mm. okay, and she, she yeah. beat it, and that's when she stopped smoking. That was right when I was born, and it came back about 17 years later, mm. and it's what, it, it's what killed her. And so there's definitely, I mean, we know cigarette smoking leads to lung cancer. I would say my viewpoint, I, I went through this, right, like kind of as a dentist, even kind of knowing, because I was already a dentist when I, I had started um, smoking a pipe, um, I really had to weigh that. Obviously, it, it's something that it really is a sliding scale for, for volume, right? And so you think one pipe a day, I can't tell you how harmful that is, but I, you, you would assume, you know, 10 pipes a day is going to be more harmful than one. Right. Right. I, mean, of course. I, I wouldn't even go so far as to say it's linear. Um, it's hard to really say. There's really not good science on that. Um, I tend to think of it just like alcohol is damaging to your liver. Right. But how many people are OK with a drink? And so then there's obviously a vast difference between social drinking and an alcoholic and mm -hmm. where that falls. And so I try to approach it with, you know, moderation, which, again, that's really is a personal definition. Right. Um, you know, I mean, I could give my personal definition, but again, that's not science-based. It's just what I personally feel comfortable with. Sure, sure. Um, if that's something you want me to share. I mean, yeah, I don't go want for it. Yeah, yeah, please do. I don't want please to do. take that as like, you have to do this. You know, right, for me, right. I limit myself to no more than two pipes a week. Okay. okay. And that's, okay. that's just what I personally feel comfortable with. Um, sure. And truth is, I don't even smoke that much. I really am pretty infrequent. Um, you know, I only smoke outside. Um, that's, that's for the health of um, my marriage, not, not personal health. <laughs> Um, I guess maybe personal health, but um, yeah, so yeah, I really probably one pipe every other week, um, okay. but that's, you know, that's just due to like schedule and things like that. Um, I, I think it's, it is hard for me to give a direct answer of like how concerned you should be because there's not a ton of scientific data. I do think, um, you know, when you look at the, the frequency and the volume and um, you're not, it's not like cigarette smoking, right? Cigarette yeah, smokers, yeah. you know, a lot of times there are some infrequent cigarette smokers, but most cigarette smokers, it's, it's pretty consistent throughout the day. Yes. Um, yeah. And so, you know, I, I tend to just limit how much I, I smoke. Um, I do use charcoal filters. When I first got into pipe smoking, I found the pipe nook. And if you followed on uh, Eddie Gray's channel, he's a really big proponent. Um, not so much for for health reasons, I don't believe. From what I've heard, it's mostly for for tongue bite and things. Right. Um, but I got into using them, and um, there is some studies, mostly with charcoal fil uh, filters and cigarettes, that show that they can reduce um, free radicals. Um, so a lot of people obviously don't like filters. That's up to them. That's yeah. Personal. Interest. I tend, I actually like them, so I use them, and I think there's a uh, a slight health benefit to them sure. as well. Sure. That would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. One of the thing about um, oral cancer that I do want to point out is esophageal cancer. There has been links between alcohol consumption and um, pipe and cigar smoking at the same time. And the, the mechanism is not well known, um, but essentially what I think is it, uh, the alcohol disrupts um, the linings, like the mucus lines, the protective linings of the mouth and esophagus. And then when you're smoking, it makes it easier uh, for those you know, toxins to get in there and disrupt cells. I see. Okay. Okay. So ideally, probably best not to combine those two, though that is a can be a hard thing to to hold to. Sure. Yeah. Just, just yeah. You know, one of those things where again, I think frequency. You know, if right. I don't think it's the end of the world, right? If you're having one drink and a, a pot, right. but if it's something you do every afternoon, I think that's something you should be aware of that you've sure. increased the risk. Sure. And and to add in a little, so on the Country Squire, uh, they interviewed a. Uh, a dentist they they had on and I, I, additional comment he made on this fact which he brought this up with what you are uh he said if you're going to do it which more than likely you're going to do it um kind of in between the smoking and taking a drink of whatever alcohol you're drinking is to take a drink of water um yeah. who knows how much it's really helping but he he said you know it it, it may help some and so there you go um, so yeah that's that's definitely something to, to bear in mind for us
so you mentioned some preventative steps we can take with uh, with with being in regular contact with the dentist and checkups and things like that. Is there anything we ourselves can do to, to help with with oral health uh, health specifically? Um, you know, so especially if you're hitting on like um, so some of the other things like dry mouth or periodontal right. disease. Right, with dry mouth, um, stay hydrated, right? If you're hydrated, you know, you're more likely to have a dry mouth, but smoke can um, affect the salivary glands. Um, so like stomatitis is what it's called. So it can basically inflame the salivary glands. Um, so don't smoke hot, right? Which there's obviously benefits to not smoking hot anyway, right? You know, exactly. you don't be going too fast anyway. And so a lot of heat over time, if you're smoking fast consistently, it can cause damage to, to some of the salivary glands, especially on the, the roof of the mouth. Um, which reduced uh, salivary function can lead to things like cavities and stuff like that and increase the risk of periodontal disease. Um, I will say if, if you've already been diagnosed with periodontal disease, um, I would definitely consider um, reducing the amount that you're smoking. Like if it's something that's getting worse, if it's stable or you don't have it and your dentist, you're in regular contact with your dentist, then, um, you know, I would say keep doing what you're doing, right? Sure. Um, but if you have periodontal disease and your dentist keeps saying like it's getting worse, I would definitely consider um, moderating how much I'm smoking because smoke, just contact with smoke. Um, and there's, there's a multitude of like mechanisms of why it, it, smoke affects uh, the gums and bone health around the tooth. But to continue smoking at the same volume, if it's getting worse, uh, you, you are at risk of tooth loss at that mm. point. Gotcha, gotcha. So at that point, you know, what can you do at home? I mean brush twice a day, floss, really floss, um, and then go in for your regular checkups. Like that's your best thing. And sometimes uh, your dentist may recommend more than just two dental cleanings a year. They may recommend three or even four. Um, and I would strongly consider, you know, um, following that advice. Gotcha. If that's good sure. for you. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So with that said, uh, now something a little bit more enjoyable for us to, to discuss is your preferences in pipe smoking. So blends, things like that. What what blends are you uh, are you uh, keen on? Sure, uh, I really like English blends, um, which you know, I obviously like a lot of my pipe smoking would be done in the mountains around a campfire um, while camping. So I just I like those um, any kind of earthy blend. Um, so I really like English blends. I'm really enjoying the Peterson blends right now. Um, current favorite um, is early morning pipe, which. Yeah maybe that makes me a bit plain but i just i don't know for whatever reason that's just kind of my favorite right now yeah absolutely yeah yeah everyone loves or a lot of people love early morning pipes so no i think that's a great choice uh and, and as far as pipes go do you have uh what, what's your collection look like do you have some favorites sure. things like that sure so uh you know i because i don't smoke that frequently i don't have like a big rotation and i try to um discipline myself to not buy more than i really need <laughs> um so right yeah. now my, my my favorites um i've got them both uh my two top favorites from uh eddie gray over at the pipe nook um it's uh peterson uh dublin filter pipes um the peterson six smooth that's probably like my favorite right now sure yeah awesome i still still have a few cobs that I'll take if I'm backpacking. Uh, so yeah. if anything happens to them, I, I don't have to worry about it too much. Those are great for outdoor yeah. outings. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, Jonathan, thank you so much, man, for coming on. I know this is helpful. Uh, it's, it's probably not something talked about, uh, at least the circles I'm around or where I've seen. It's not spoken of sure. um, on or, or addressed enough, but uh, definitely sure. something for us to keep in mind. So appreciate you enlightening us on it. Absolutely. Thanks, Wilson. Appreciate it. Uh, all right, guys. Well, until then, we'll, we'll catch you next week for more, uh, more reviews and information coming out. So you, you guys take care. We'll talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.